All right. It is Tuesday, October 16th, uh, meeting of the Economic Development Committee. Uh, it is 10.07. We'll call the meeting to order. We'll start with the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, first thing on the agenda, let's see, uh, did hear from Todd. Uh, he's not going to be able to make the meeting. Uh, important thing came up last minute for work. Uh, Ellen's uh, now an alternate member. She's going to be watching from home. Uh, we, we do have a quorum. Um, I noticed, well, we'll go right to the, the minutes of September 18th. Um, I noticed that we, we had, due to no quorum form, the meeting minutes could not be approved. Uh, just to let you know, the way the quorum, even though we have alternate members, they don't count towards our total. All right, so our membership is based on seven. So as long as four members, and it could be four full members, uh, it could be uh, three full members and one alternate here, we can call the meeting. Because once, if a full member is not here, the alternate stands in as a full member at that meeting. Okay. So, so technically, we're, we're, we're good on that. Um, I wasn't actually uh, here at the last meeting. I, I did look at it online. Uh, you did a very nice job. Is there any questions about any of the minutes? Thank you for putting them together, Brian. Nothing on the minutes, but thank you for addressing some of the questions in email form that we had. You know, oh, as far as like, with the yeah. alternate? Yeah. Mark, officially welcome again. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Mark was voted in last night by the planning board as a full member. Great. Um, just to uh, let the committee know as well, Ellen has uh, stepped down as a full member uh, so that Mark could be a full member, but Ellen uh, will remain as an alternate. Mm -hmm. So right now our committee is full. Uh, so are there any questions on the minutes of September 18th, any changes? All right, seeing none, I'm, we'll accept a motion to accept the minutes of September 18th. So moved. All right, PJ made the motion. Is there a second? I second it. All right, Brian, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, next on the agenda, um, we technically need to vote on Ellen as an alternate member. <laughs> Um, so she was approved last night by the Board of Selectmen, um, so we've always voted here as well. Mm -hmm. uh, do I enter, I'll, I'll entertain a motion to accept Ellen LaPreece as an alternate member to the Economic Development Committee? So moved. All right, PJ's made the motion. Second. Second. Mark is second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Uh, town meeting. Uh, town meeting's coming up on Monday, October 29th, um, I think 7 o'clock, Shepherd Hill. Uh, there are two articles sponsored by the Economic Development Committee. Um, we, I did go to the public hearing for the uh, FAA and the Board of Selectmen to help get their support on this. I think we're, we have a really good shot at getting both of our articles passed as is. Um, speaking with Paul Joseph, it uh, looks like he's already got that Agricultural Committee uh, lined up for members too of, of the different farm owners and those that are farm managers throughout Central Mass, you know, that are residents of Dudley. So I think we look really good there. Uh, this is a great opportunity to actually talk about a, wa a Warren article that is not sponsored by us, it's sponsored by the Planning Board, uh, and that is the Marijuana Zoning Bylaws. Um, so just to let people know, the way it works is if, if something like marijuana, well, I'll use the adult entertainment district as an example. Um, if you don't have it zoned for something specific in a specific area, they can pretty much by right go in that area if you don't designate it. And so years ago, there was talk of uh, a strip club moving into Park and Shop Plaza. And so what the planning board did, as soon as that rumor even came around, we, we looked at our zoning bylaws and determined that we didn't have an adult entertainment district. And so we, we, we presented a zoning bylaw and there was some opposition to it because people are just against adult entertainment establishments to, to begin with. 
but we really made the case that if we didn't have one on the books, they could go anywhere they want. And so at town meeting, they approved it to the small area over off an industrial area, West Dudley Road. Um, it passed, and the whole strip thing died at that point. Well, the same thing holds through with marijuana. Um, whether you support it, oppose it, uh, if you don't have it zoned, come, I think it's November 1st, the moratorium list? It's November 15th, we have the moratorium. Okay, November 15th, the moratorium expires. So at that point, if we don't have an approved zoning bylaw, they can pretty much go wherever they want. All right, so the planning board being proactive, working with the town administrator and the board of selectmen, they've come up with, with these bylaws. Um, they are very, very in-depth. Um, so there's different uses and Mark, please. I mean, you just stepped down as chair of the planning board. <laughs> so step in whenever you want. Yeah. You have uses, you have a use table, which basically breaks it down by our zoning district, what's permitted, what's not permitted. And then you have different definitions and things along those lines. Um, the biggest thing that I saw that was a little concerning, um, was that there were some special permits available in residential areas and also in some of the light industrial areas. Um, I did speak to the planning board last night informally. They're gonna be holding public hearing on this, I believe. A week from tomorrow. A week from tomorrow. So it's probably what, October 24th? 24th, 24th. Mm -hmm. all right. And so what I did tell them that we would do is uh, we would send an official uh, memo from the Economic Development Committee with our recommendation for any proposed changes to this. So just off the top of my head, there were some uses in residential areas such as the cooperatives. Um, you know, there were some uh, micro businesses permitted in residential. So it's, it's my own personal feeling that it is better to be very tight with the regulation to begin with because it's still an unknown. It's still federal controlled substance. <laughs> uh, so it's better to be tight and open it up over time rather than be open and then trying to rein it in down the road. Um, my feeling was um, we're trying to really get those old mills Right, have a focus on those old mills, which Brian's going to talk about a conversation he had, you know, with uh, Rep. Durant earlier. Um, but if we could concentrate on those areas where the mills are, that that would be the preferable place for these research or facilities or things along those lines. And so, um, you know, Guy Horn, who's now the chair of the planning board, said, Well, geez, maybe we should just look at limiting it to the, uh, the mill overlay district to start. So strip it out of all these other places and just start with the mill overlay district. Would that so, be the production you're talking about, strictly production? Uh, that would be for, for any, any of these as you go through it, that the only marijuana facilities, because there's, there's probably a dozen type of. Yeah, they separate it into uh, cultivation and, you know, and they limit the cultivation to not able to set up a, uh, distribution to an end user so then the cultivation is just that cultivation and then you you send it to uh, a distribution place which is a different zoning right where they can set up shop and then people can go in and actually acquire the goods you can't put those in the same district or the same building the same building right. you can't put them in the same building same with residential you can't have residential use in the same building either mm -hmm. yeah okay. so, so yeah on, on, on my thought on this is I'm just trying to, you know, if we're trying to promote cultivation and agricultural, how does that all come into the zoning requirements as far as allowing a farmer to grow? What's the, uh, the, def I have the definition of, of uh, craft marijuana cooperative here? But that is, but, you know, the farming is, is in a residential zone. And so it's not it's not perfect finished draft either that we're still working on but no that's why he's just asking the question how would you some of it some of it yes yeah i mean there's a lot of territory that's still residential that i imagine is still agricultural well so it is not a as, limit a lot of the land you see is vacant is not not available for this because you can't put it in a uh, 61a property in other words if it's under chapter 61a or an apr restriction 
you can't you can't do it it's not one of those exempt uh, agricultural uses like you know vegetable gardens or livestock or whatever it may be if it's, it's, it's an agricultural use it's not considered an agricultural use under that definition of section 3 of chapter 48 of the zoning so you know now they did have a couple of definitions like the hemp cultivator is an agricultural agricultural establishment licensed by the Mass Department of Agricultural Resources um, Morning. you have um, you can't grow it within the, a mile and a half of hemp either because I guess that's the uh, it's as far as the bees go mm -hmm. you have any cross-pollination because hemp is not considered cannabis unless it becomes cannabis I guess that's why that's, that's not allowed to within a uh, mile and a half. Yeah, it says the bylaw does not apply to the cultivation of industrial hemp as required by Mass, you know, DAR. So well, let's, con you know, continue the discussion here. Jump in, please. So, so, so your concern is to make sure that the farmers, well, well, first, the number of permits the bylaw says is 20% of our alcohol permits, retail right and that's oh that's just retail yeah so, so how many it. alcohol permits do you know how many we have in town not offhand but I think we figured out it's one retailer only one retailer would be allowed I it's only one okay yeah. and, and really I, th I think what we're, I mean, some of these other definitions or, or uses, uh, like the independent testing labs, the research facilities, the, uh, there were some, some other things too, uh, the actual manufacturer of, of various products. I mean, um, those are type of things that I thought, you know, in an enclosed mill, would be, would be would be almost perfect. Right. Um, they they do restrict any online. I think in all the districts, the uh, vaping and the use on property. I think that was restricted in all districts. No. Well, you only be using your private home basically. Yeah, the I mean, only place you restricted to districts. Yeah, to to uh, districts where. Yeah, it's more folks in production than retail, and it's not allowed to be used on site. You can't, in other words, you can't just buy it like a like you buy a beer over the over the bar. You can't consume it on site if you buy it there. Yeah, so even if you buy it, even if it's a retail use, you can't consume it on site. Yeah. So it says adult on site marijuana social consumption operator, which would be a public facility or a private club where people can either smoke or vape. It's not permitted in every district. Mm -hmm. All right. That's the uh, better way for the state to weigh in on that, right? Yep. So, so who's um, whose bylaw is is this that we're kind of trying to duplicate? It's a combination of a lot of things. It's a model. It's a few towns. It's uh, town council's comments as well are unfolded in here. Yeah. So, you know, my I kind of got involved with it a little bit on the planning board before I had uh, left, but. Um, I think you're right on, John, with um, the fact that, you know, let's restrict it to a point and then kind of, you know, uh, release it in time. Um, I think the recommendations that have been made on there, like the one that you just brought up, is, is a good one in that, you know, we really don't necessarily want uh, public clubs where people can consume, um, you know, other than in their own residence by law. Um, you know, if you think back about how restrictive we were on solar farms, um, I don't think that we really should worry about how restrictive we are on, you know, something uh, along these lines here. Uh, but, um, you know, my, my opinion is that we, uh, you know, maybe we take the advice of, uh, of the planning board chair and, you know, we restrict you know everything that is potentially permitted today um, 
and restrict it to just that area and then anything that's not permitted we leave it as not permitted and then you know we'll open it up as we see um, you know the the feds uh, do their research and and slowly do the same thing that we're proposing as well um, and then we can modify this <clears throat> twice a year we can modify it once a year or we can modify it whenever we want you know so I think the you know reasons for putting this where it is is that it would be say for example in the, in the business area it would be a lot of the retail use anyway if we didn't have a restriction on here a special permit or you know if we don't specify it and specifically list it as far as the industrial districts it includes a lot more than it includes actually I think all the uh, overlay area for the uh, the mill overlay area is almost all in the uh, heavy industrial district anyway but the area to the southwest of town isn't those, those mills in the uh, southwest area of town of uh, West Dudley Road and that uh, those aren't in the mill overlay district so maybe something to consider there where we want to target it if we want to target it specifically to the mill overlay district which includes Stevens Mills and then that Steve's Linden Mill, and then that would uh, restrict residential use of that as well, so because it couldn't be in the same building. So, so there's, there's so many things to weigh. Yeah. So the Mill Overlay District is it is pretty much parcel oriented, right? Pretty much, yeah. So you look. I've got. We can, you know, we have the big map over there, but you can see it over here, pretty much. Yeah. Do you want, do you want to look at the Mill Overlay District yeah. just to make sure it makes sense? Sorry, Fred, we're going to have you zone in on the zone of map. <laughs> yeah. There you go. The middle of the way, this will include the theory and chase. chase down. Okay. It also includes the area just. Uh, all right, so let's see, this is where Hanky Sass is, right? Right. And so then you have the mill that's now closed for the most part because of the pipes. Is that over here? I'm not sure. I think that might be this part over here. In that parcel there. But, but that, is that mill part of the mill overlay district? Yes. Okay. It's right here. Okay. If it isn't, it's part of the industrial 43 district. Okay. Um, same here. Except for portions in the R10 district, but I think it's mostly parking. Most of the uh, steam mill is in the 43 district. Okay. But most of the footprint of the building. That's what I thought. I thought that that one was the footprint of the building. It's in the IMG 43 district anyway. You restrict it to the mill overlay district. That's strict in the side of town. It's, it doesn't include all this other area, the two of this petition. A lot of big buildings over here. There's a lot of big space in this area. The west side of town. So the one thing I noticed you, they have in common is that they're all the heavy industrial. Right. So you have the industrial 43. You have an industrial 130. That's an industrial 43. That's an industrial 43. The LI 43 district, the industrial, is actually confirmed more retail than some Yeah. Aspects. Yeah, and that. So this is the area that could be either uh, LI 43 or the Swifty It's really Yeah, and I think that was one of the concerns on the LI stuff is the fact that, you know, a large portion of West Main Street is LI 43, and you really don't want that stuff kind of being the center of the town. You know, like the focal point. That would be that would be more that would be the production part of the would be more the retail part. But so this would be where the big mill is. Yeah, that's right. Okay. It's in the industrial district. So, so would you would you say it's fair that the 
at the end of the day, if it's zoned in the industrial 43 or the industrial 130, we would be all right with no overlay is great, but we're concerned that there's no, there's nothing over in that part. I mean, talking about production in this area. Pretty much indoors. Yeah. See, see, the other thing, too, though, is by narrowing it down, I, I think it almost gives us a better shot to redevelop those mills. Because, you know, the kind of money they're throwing at this. Yeah, so, so, so if we just say, okay, it, it is the mill overlay districts because we want these mills preserved. And once it gets up to code, I mean, if they, they fail, at least you, you don't have to spend $40 million to, 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 to reassign the building down the road. I guess the marijuana cultivation is mostly done indoors. Indoors, too. Is that the, is that the, yeah. A lot of the restrictions from the outdoors, but it's all in the TCC restrictions. So the things we need to think about are, because there's some, some industrial 43 areas that abut a residential zone. So we can't think of every one of them now, but, you know, is it... Is it lighted at night? Is it, you know, those sort of things. You know, that's important. You know, we talk about subdivisions and tempering the light in the subdivision. I think it's just as important to make sure that we are thinking through that. So again, I think limiting it, and I think you bring up a good point, you've got two mills that basically have shut down because they can't afford to heat them anymore, or the pipes burst, or the furnace is, you know, out of reach as far as we repair those. So what's going to happen is those buildings are just going to come tumbling down if we don't force some sort of activity. And this may be just the one thing. If we were building a village center, to me, the location may not be the most ideal. Coming right out of Webster downtown into. Well, we just become an extension of Webster at that point. And even CM CMRPC's recommendation to, you know, really develop like the sidewalks, right? Then you get to the whole Black Tavern area over there, mm -hmm. right? I mean, people are talking that you really don't have a center, and if we could somehow, I know the area is protected for the walk, you know, the aquifer protection area, but it still doesn't mean you can't use it. <laughs> you know, right now it's kind of all off limits. Yeah, I mean this. I mean, this area over here, I mean, is right in the middle of a lot of stuff going on. So yeah. to your to your comment, I mean, this area here is, mm -hmm. it hits all the, you know, checks all the boxes on what we're trying to accomplish. Yeah. Right? There's very little, you know, I don't think there's any issue on lighting. Or, you know what I mean? Just mm -hmm. less neighbors to complain over there than, than up, you know, up here. But this is such a massive site that... Yeah. Based on indoor production. That was the reason for the wood. Yeah. 
Well, right, and the problem here is that anything indoors, you need fire protection, fire suppression, and there's no access to water. Over here? Yes, over here. I mean, you look at Wetco, when they did their expansion, they have to put pods in for their fire suppression system. So we have that zone that way, but there's no infrastructure there. It's never going to happen. This area, none of this area has water, so let's let the brings it about. Yeah. So, you know, is that, you know, originally, right, in theory, right, the theory and the practical sometimes don't align. That was one of those things until there's infrastructure. I, I think, I don't know, that's but, but we'll go through. So what you're proposing is light industrial doesn't allow any cultivation. Uh, you would go with the, the industrial 43. Uh, I, I would just propose that they, they start with the mill overlay district. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's focus in on our mill properties. And then that's going to be a great entryway into the conversation you had and the initiative that you're about to undertake. <laughs> <laughs> And then again, we go always open it up once we get a better feel. Yeah. Well, it's easier to make it small than it's going to be bigger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like there's uh, huge revenues lost by restricting it to the town because it's just essentially taxes being paid. It's not like a, uh, a solar pilot or anything like that. So I don't think there's any revenue restriction that we're losing by doing that. No, and if someone, if one of these companies has a proposal, when by the time you look at the whole approval process, I mean, you could always go to town meeting and, and, and rezone something if you need to, you know, with, with the public support. All right. Thanks for bringing the big map. <laughs> Don always has maps with him. Right, Don? I always have my back pocket just in case. <laughs> That's a rule of maps in the All right, so uh, we'll, we'll do, I'll just do an informal query. Where do you think the permitted uses should be, Brian? For cultivation? For, for, for any of these uses. Well, the cultivation, you talked industrial, uh, you know, industrial 43, I think, you know, I think that's uh, uh, definitely a, an area. Well, the other, the, the heavier industrial, I, I, what? I won, was it? Yeah, light industrial. No, light industrial is pretty much along West Main Street. Well, you got to remember, Industry too. One, I, 130. Industry 43 and Industry 130. And what about the rest of them? Mill overlay or industrial yeah, no, property? the mill overlay, I'm all on board with the mill overlay. I think from a cultivation standpoint. And, you know, cultivation, uh, testing facilities, and uh, uh, manufacturing of products in the mill overlay. Right? So okay. So just primarily those three uh, uses. Oh, the research facility as well. But, you know, I'm, I'm open on the on the uh, mill overlay for 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 those uses, um, you, know, uh, you know, from a dispensary standpoint, I, I, I don't remember seeing a dispensary, uh, was there, yeah, the, was there any allotment for that, for the for a dis dispensary? My, um, research? They, they, have, they have a couple, in medical marijuana, there's a retail dispensing. Uh, right now, it, it was being proposed for business 15, as well as light industrial 43 and 87. Yeah, yeah we need to remove uh, we need to remove the uh, cooperative out of the residential area, right? Yes. Yeah, so, so what we would simply so, so I guess what the approach would that I'm considering in our response to the planning board would be the that the economic development committee believes that all of the uses described in this table should be limited to the just the mill overlay district initially yeah and that would be that, that would be that's, that's just, that would I be would, our simple statement to them. that would be what i would you, so you're supportive yeah. of that yeah pj oh yeah mm -hmm. i'm in agreement all right so i just have a question what about the retail though the same to start 
Okay, I'm not sure that that's really prone to retail, though. Well, they, they could always renovate the buildings, couldn't they? I guess so. <laughs> and traffic and proximity to the state line. And Webster. They don't need a lot of space yeah. for... Yeah, they have the production belt behind the, the uh, supermarket, yeah. don't they? Yeah. Yeah. But they're talking about retail as well. Yeah, they are. Okay. So maybe we become more of the behind the scenes stuff mm -hmm. hidden in, in the walls of these big old factories and the retail somewhere else. Yeah. Maybe that's where our destiny is. Always been on, always been the farm, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the only, so, so let me make this official that way we can officially, uh, the chair will entertain a motion to recommend to the planning board that all of the uses uh, describe in the proposed zoning bylaw, marijuana zoning bylaw, that all of those uses be designated to the Mill Overlay District to start. So moved. All right, Mark has made the motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay, PJ second. Any further discussion? You want to you want to leave out the industrial area and the other parts of town? For now, just the Mill Overlay District is going to be our recommendation. Okay. Any other discussion? All right, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so I'll, I'll, dr I'll send that up to the planning board so that they have that for their public hearing. And then the only other thing I notice, I mean, it's a very thorough bylaw, um, but there's a couple places like the Board of Health, you know, but, I'll, but they can do that, like the odor control plan, mm -hmm. the Board of Health should be involved with that. Mm -hmm. But uh, Through the yeah. chair, Don, um, what, is, uh, what, is, what is your thought or what are your thoughts on what the planning board will think about what we just recommended? I only talked to one member about it. Okay. Briefly. I know you guys have been discussing it for a while though, right? Yeah. I know, uh, obviously, um, uh, Guy Horn is, uh, had made the recommendation that it be just Mill, so we we'll kind of have his idea, yeah. but. Well, I always figure that when you drive after bylaw, it's easy to start big and get smaller when you go to vote on it yeah. and try to add something later. So um, maybe they would have the philosophy that they want to start smaller mm -hmm. and restrict to certain areas and see if it, if anything comes of it. Mm -hmm. And this well, is yeah, just a recommendation. Uh, obviously, the planning board could decide that they don't like our recommendation exactly. and make it. I, I just be careful about the uh, that it's it might be an allowed use of something we have already that we haven't listed unless we list it specifically so we'd still have to somehow retain this use table in some form add a designation to it maybe that it's only in those areas of uh, these districts that are in the mill overlay district there's some there's some way to word it but you don't specifically list them as not allowed or allowed here or not allowed there. Um, someone can come along and say, well, you know, we, we're allowed a retail use just like uh, a liquor store. Right. So, but, but, but that's the whole purpose here, right? Is if, if we have it zoned that it's not permitted in that <laughs> business 15, yeah. But they could do that retail. So, I don't know, do you add another column and simply put Mill Overlay District and put SPBB? <laughs> not sure, because it's a little bit different than the yeah. bylaw. Maybe we could add another. We do the use table somehow. I, I don't I okay. check into that, but the way the Mill Overlay District is listed is, is it's, it's not part of the use table. It's not listed as part of the use table. It's listed as a, you can do this in the Mill Overlay District. You know, this is more of a listing, that section of the bylaw. Okay. Check into that. Good point, Mark. Mm. All right. Um, next on the agenda, the economic development plan update. Uh, CMRPC is still uh, doing their phase two stuff. As far as I know, um, I talked to Kerry Last, late last week, and she was going to meet with uh, the Grange. Okay. Yesterday morning, I haven't talked to her yet, so we'll see what came out of that. 
And we're looking at doing the, uh, the forum, whatever, you, whatever we're going to call it, the Farmers Forum, yep. sometime next month. Uh, we have to get through a town meeting, obviously. And people start thinking about other things. So we're looking at the first, these are the full weeks, though. The first full week, the second full week. Third full week is Thanksgiving. Nobody's going to want to meet that week. But then, I, personally, I think the best is probably the week after Thanksgiving, because that's before people really get hunkered down into their uh, Christmas agenda. It's still the you know, month of November, so uh, the perception is that it's still the end of Christmas season yet, or whatever holiday season yet. Could I possibly make a suggestion? Um, I feel fairly confident that the Agricultural Commission is going to be approved at town meeting. Yeah. Um, again, Paul Joseph's been working a lot behind the scenes on getting that staffed with the uh -huh. different farms and membership. Okay. So we feel that once the commission is approved, it can be established pretty quickly. Maybe this forum is a great town welcome yes. to this new commission. Yes, absolutely. And, and, we, and we kind of celebrate it around this new agricultural commission and the members and give them almost like a, a birthday party, their first birthday. <laughs> yeah. If you want to do something like that, but we can actually wait for the, to set the date until they're formed. Okay. Because, think, you know, it might be winter time and who knows, maybe, maybe January is the great time for them to do it because the fields are covered with snow and ice. And <laughs> yeah, I think that project is done. <laughs> yeah. Project, the, the project has to be finished, I think, by the end of this, this, oh, the end of this calendar oh, yeah. year. I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I think they'll be formed by the last week in November. The week after Thanksgiving, they'll probably be formed and ready to go. We're not thinking about the holiday season yet. Yeah, I, I think the selectmen, as soon as it's approved, they'll put that on the agenda and, and get it established. Yeah. It'll be a good time to get everything together, yeah. I'd say. All right. Any other updates on the economic development plan itself? No, I, no. I'm going to talk to Carrie a little bit more. I'm going to sit down with her, and she's working on a lot of things too. Yeah, and you know, we submitted it to the selectmen there, and you know, what about recreation, John? What? What the recreation committee? Uh, it's on. It's on the warrant. Uh, we get a lot of volunteers come in through the website. Most of them are actually more oriented for the recreation commission. So I think once that's set up. We'll get some new blood involved, especially younger families seem to be quite excited about it. It's good. You know, Town Beach and some of the uh, things like that. Then, you know, the rail trail and yeah. that, that one there will probably, you know, but it'll probably be through the Board of Selectmen, technically. Yeah. Because they're the appoint authority, but yeah. uh, that's, that's a committee that's really hoping to be nice and robust as well. All right. So... Town planner update. Do you have any other? I just updates? gave it to you. No, that was it. All right. Um, the old business focus on the Dudley video. Um, well, I think there was some conversation at last meeting on the on the video. Has anything? Did anything come out of that? Is there a team kind of assigned? Is there? No, Joanne was going to give us an update. Okay. This meeting, so there was no update at the last meeting. Yeah. I think it, I still think it's a great concept. It's just a matter of the logistics and, and the players and who wants to do what. Um, so I'll, I'll, we'll keep that open, put that on the agenda for the next meeting. Uh, new business open discussion, old mill redevelopment. Also, uh, at last meeting, you guys spent a little bit of time talking about that next project, and it seemed to be the mill came up quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So, Brian, I'm going to let them... I'm going to hand the floor over to you, and you can tell them some of the initiative that you did and, and what you're working on. Okay. This is the last meeting. Uh, we discussed the mill, and uh, there were some action items, and one of the action items was uh, uh, contact some of our local uh, representatives, uh, politicians. So, um, you know, I gave uh, uh, Peter Durant uh, a call, and, and he was... Uh, willing to meet with uh, meet with me and, and John attended as well and uh, so we met with Peter and uh, and Ann his assistant and uh, you know kicked around some ideas about um, you know maybe what other towns are doing or you know and and, and uh, some of the history of what worked and what didn't work and um, you know one of the ideas that uh, you know so we kind of 
again, we kind of honed in on this uh, 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 older than 55 type community development or, or, you know, but we've also kicked around some other ideas that may have worked in Southbridge or Spencer. Uh, Peter seemed to have a lot of experience in Spencer, but um, one of the things, uh, because of the fact that the town doesn't own the building, it does give it, uh, you know, a little bit of a different spin on it than if, if the town uh, did own it. But um, uh, I think, uh, you know, what came out of it is this committee or this town, we, we, you know, we would behave as some sort of way of brokering, uh, you know, some uh, deal to move a project forward on that property. And so... Some of the ac action items that were 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 uh, result of this meeting was uh, Peter uh, in his office signed up to contact a local developer who uh, has done some projects in Spencer who has got received some grant money from the government to convert some of these old buildings into uh, uh, you know residential property. So he uh, you know I don't know what the timeline is on that, but that's on his. Um, uh, radar to do, which I was happy that he was willing to, to do that on uh, for us. Um, so what we what we came up with, and so in our uh, journey to try to broker a deal, is uh, and where our role would be would be to uh, reach out to the present owner of you know at least the first the Twin Tower Mill complex, uh, reach out to that owner and get a sense of where they are. Do they want to sell? Are they interested in selling? And if they are interested in selling, you know, get an understanding of what they what they want, right? Are they that could range from you know, yeah, cash obviously, but maybe there's some creative deal. So our job would be to uh, try to pull together some parties and try to get uh, once we understand from from the owner what they're willing to do, we can start to put together uh, a dossier, if you will, of what this business situation looks like. So we say, okay, the owner is willing to, this is what they're willing to do. They're going to hold paper, they're willing to do it for 10 years, 20 years, whatever it is. We start collecting that information and completing this dossier. We, um, you know, we've got some, you know, some of the discussion we had today, we could add to that dossier as well. Hey, here's the potential uses. You know, gather all the information that we know and uh, with the anticipation of, of selling this idea. We have, you know, we get people on the same page. So, um, so part of this is uh, somebody has to contact the uh, the current owner. So, um, you know, I'm willing to I'm willing to contact the uh, the owner to see what the you know what they're thinking. And but I at, at this point I would need to get the, this committee's uh, approval uh, to say, hey, yeah, Brian, you can call and and talk on our behalf and uh, talk to the owner. And so um, that, that's the next step for me in this project. And then, you know, we'll wait on Peter and see what he has to say. Oh, I'll follow up and finally hear from him in a, in a couple of weeks. But, um, and that's, that was the essence of the, you know, the meeting. And, um, you know, I think we've got, we've got a, a supporter, Peter Durant's office is one. I mean, uh, you know, we can continue to you know, bark up that tree if we feel we need more resources, but that's where we are right now. Excellent. Yeah, so, so basically, you know, the Economic Development Committee will make, make the, <coughs> the owner of the property an offer he can't refuse, right? You, you're going to give him the assets as far as time, energy, coordination of resources, right? You're going to sit down. You, you're going to work with the town administrator, right? Say, what's the town willing to do for these uses? Uh, you know, what's the state willing to do, right? You're going to broker all this, and it's going to cost him nothing. But he's just got to agree. God bless you. He's just got to uh, 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 be part of the game plan. And, you know, he might sit down and, and say, no, nope, I want to do this on my own, whatever I have. And in which case, we don't waste our time. Right. So I, I think it's a great initiative. I was very impressed that, that, that you made the call and put that meeting together. Uh, Peter was excited to work with us as well on that. Um, so... I, I say uh, uh, we give Brian the authority to act on our behalf and do whatever he needs to do to get those meetings set up and continue to come up with a mill economic development plan. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah let, let's put that in an official motion. That way. All right. So, so the chair will entertain a motion to uh, authorize Brian to act on the board's behalf in coming up with an economic development plan and working with the owner of Stevens Lennons. So moved. All right. PJ's made the motion. Second. Mark is second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. So would it be um, would it be prudent for us to maybe contact the owner now and say, hey, so this is what we're working on rather than, I mean, we could get three no's. Hey, no, I already have something else in the works. Yes. Uh, I don't know, just so that we're not, you know, running, I mean, you obviously put a lot of effort into that. So we're not running down that road and then find out yeah, we got all this stuff put together, but yeah. they've got some other plan, you know? Yeah, no, I don't we, think they would, but probably right. wouldn't be a bad idea just to let them know, you know, grease the skids a little, right? Yeah. So, hey, this is what we're working on. Are you interested? Are you in? If it was, a, I mean, even if they did have something else up their sleeve, I can't imagine that they would say no. Yeah, let's see what it looks like. What are you looking at as uh, uses, reuses, if you will, of the mill complexes? Well, I mean, some, some, yeah. I mean, our first thought was, you know, uh, residential, you know, some, some form of residential, either, you know, just open ended or over 55. Uh, and I, you know, I'm, I think right now everything's on the, on the, on the table. I just bring it up because you can't mix residential uses and, uh, more of the marijuana uses in the same building. Right. No, just no. To think, yeah, just I, to think about it, you know, yeah. keep it in mind. <clears throat> Yeah, and I don't. Th I think what's important is that we don't confuse different uses and in, in, in different types. I mean, so like what Peter had discussed was this fella had done assisted living facilities. He would converted them into private sale condos. That's on the residential stuff. Right. So, I mean, I mean, we could sit here and think all day, right? We could say marijuana, right? We could say, okay, Amazon moves in, right? We try for IPG photonics, right? Each one kind of different, but I think given Brian the authority to, to at least sit down, get things moving with the, the owner, like Mark said, I mean, I think the first step is, is to go get in touch with the owner. Yeah. And I think there's probably some, some funding that's out there that we can tap into at some point in time, hopefully very soon and later, yeah. uh, for infrastructure improvements, uh, sewer upgrades and things of that type that would help anybody moving into those complexes possibly. I think there was some funds, some sort of grants for cleaning up, cleaning the site or something. Yeah, because that was that was the other that, thing. Is that Peter too, saying the odds are pretty good? There's, you know, look what we found with the fire department. <laughs> as soon as they started digging, right? Contamination. Uh -huh. Odds are pretty good. There's going to be some contamination on that site. There's been some cleanup over there too. Yeah. I don't know if it's complete. So, so that's where if the owner works with us early in the process, we can start doing what's necessary. So, so Don, I would ask, could you? Get Brian all that contact information for that owner. See what I can find. Yeah, okay. Because I he was before the planning board before. You mean the owner of Stevens? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because he's out of New Hampshire, right? Mm. I remember he was out of New Hampshire. I think he was probably on the uh, North Shore. I'll have to check into okay. that. Okay. I can't remember either. Yeah. yeah, but if you could get Brian that information, and then Brian, maybe at the next meeting you'll have an update, or maybe you won't. <laughs> oh, I'll call the guy. Yeah, I know you yeah, will. I don't have a problem <laughs> giving him a call and just, you know, getting a, might take me two weeks to get him on the phone. I don't know. You know, it's like, you know, yeah. nobody picks up the phone anymore, and, yeah. you know, who's this guy calling, right? <laughs> you know, so. It'll, everybody texts well. first. Yeah, text in, yeah. email, if you got an email, it'll all work, right? Yeah. All right, any further discussion? Yeah, thanks on the old mill issue all right uh, just uh, i sent out an email of some cmrpc upcoming events um they're great for people who want to learn how to hold public hearings or things along those lines you're never obligated to go but just want to make those available uh, the only other thing is town meeting monday october 29th 7 p.m um, so open floor here. Does any member here have anything that they want to talk about that they didn't see on the agenda? Brian, yeah. you have anything? No, I'm good. PJ? Mark? No. Nope. All right. Chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay, PJ made the motion. Second. Mark second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.
Alright.